In 2020, Apple made a revolution with the M1 chip. Now we are at M4 already, and it seems there is no magic left. In this video, I will tell you how Apple fold us with the M3, why the M4 Max are coming out so soon, and answer the question, is Apple still in the lead. Now, before getting into the nitty gritty of chip design and architecture, let's go back to 2020. That year, while we're all sitting home, Apple knocked our socks off with its M1 MacBook Air. Totally new SoC, designed specifically for Macs, supports all the apps, runs the same macOS, has much better battery life, and doesn't need active cooling three times more powerful for the same price. Apple really outdid themselves here. The M1 MacBook Air was nothing shy of a revolution, and to me, it's somewhat sentimental. A video about it gave this channel a huge boost when I started, but even four years later, people are still talking about it and still own it. And I'm sure in four more years, nothing will change. That's how good the M1 is. Gosh, it supports all the latest Apple intelligence features we saw during WWDC in June. It's still king. With the M1, Apple like a whip packed everything into one chip. Processor, memory, graphics chip, neural module, encoders, decoders. Well, sure, technically the M1 was just a scaled up version of the A14 from iPhone 12, but the same can be said about the M4. Anyway, soon the M1 found its way to Mac Mini, iMac, and even iPad. I have an M1 iPad Pro right here, and it's a real beast. That's how capable and scalable the M1 is. A year later, Apple showed us the M1 Pro, M1 Max, and M1 Ultra. Those chips prove that Apple can scale up the design almost infinitely. Make the M1 bigger. Easy, stack two of them together, done. The 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros that came out with M1 Pro and Max chips are probably the best Macs Apple ever made. Powerful, light, with new old keyboard, ProMotion displays, MagSafe, tons of force, everything we wanted, really. Apple got rid of Intel and AMD for good. But there was one problem that became more and more apparent with each new generation. The performance wasn't growing that much. The M2 was around 15% faster than the M1, and the M3 was around 10% faster than that. The gains weren't that impressive. Apple needed to do something about it, because there was a far bigger problem waiting for them. The competition was catching up. And now, four years later, the first laptops with ARM chips, the Snapdragon X Elite and X Plus, are already arriving to customers. With their specs and capabilities, they're pretty much breathing down Apple's neck. Almost as powerful, just as energy efficient, and with AI built in. Built in AI is the hottest thing in tech right now, especially in productivity apps. Boardmix is the new tool I've been using lately, and it's actually amazing. They are sponsoring this video, and Boardmix is this infinite whiteboard where I can let my thoughts roam free. I can create mind maps, flowcharts, add stickers, and Kanban boards. All can be done in one click. I just select the object and drag it onto the whiteboard. This way, I can quickly visualize ideas, take notes, and organize my thoughts. Now, if you think that I'm just sitting and endlessly adding blocks, you're wrong. I actually do almost nothing to get the layout I want. There's a library of pre-made templates built in. Templates for brainstorming, architecture diagrams, agile scrum tools, etc. This flexibility makes it perfect for me and other content creators who want to stay organized. No worries, it works like a charm for hybrid teams as well. But what I liked the most was the built-in board mix AI. It can generate images, mind maps, diagrams, texts, code, all sorts of things. I just pick what I want and it does all the job for me. We'll create these perfectly formatted templates and fill them with text in seconds, freeing me tons of time. Right now I'm using it alone, but if you want your colleagues to collaborate, BoardMax supports more than 500 users to edit on the same board. It also works with different file types and can be integrated with tools like Skype and Zoom. I seriously can't think of a better tool to boost the team's productivity. I will leave a link in the video description for you to try, so be sure to check Check it out. Apple's in the pickle. The chips aren't getting that much better. Competitors are almost as good. Apple is done for. There are three things that made Apple Silicon so good. One, the ARM architecture. It is much simpler than x86 in modern chips from Intel or AMD. Without getting too technical, the main difference comes down to the instructions these architectures are using. The x86 was first introduced in 1978, and its most modern version came out in 2003. So all the x86 processors 
processors must support all the instructions and commands that were written for older systems. And all the commands are different in length, which makes working with them impossible. It's like moving to a new flat, but taking all the garbage with you. All furniture and that toaster you haven't used in ages, all commands for ARM are standardized and there are no old libraries that must be supported. Writing code is easier, no need to account for a legacy code and a super streamlined pipeline. The second ingredient to the M1 success is the amount of systems packed on a single chip. Storage controllers, audio processors, encryption systems, security and memory controllers, and so much more. All of these things are combined into one single chip, making all interactions between components faster and more secure. Maybe separately, all of those parts aren't impressive, but when sandwiched together, that's when the magic happens. And the third reason is total control on Apple's side. Now, instead of relying on Intel or AMD and shaping the products around them, Apple decides where to improve first. If Apple wants the chip to be better with graphics, they make the improvements themselves. We saw that with the M3, which got a much improved GPU system with ray tracing. Now, Apple can shape the products however they like and tailor every part of them to their vision. So why don't we see the performance doubling each year? It's simple, really. They're limited by tech. All Apple Silicon chips are made by TSMC in Taiwan. TSMC is the most advanced chip manufacturer in the world. Probably you never wondered how these chips are made. Well, I'll keep it simple. TSMC takes a thin, sheet of silicon called wafer and using this special laser prints the transistors on it. That's all you need to know. The layout and pattern as well as size of these transistors depends on the architecture. So each time you hear that the chip uses the three nanometer architecture it means that the size of one transistor is three nanometers. And that's where Apple is really limited by the capabilities of TSMC. The company may have designs for two nanometers chips, but if TSMC can't manufacture them, Apple's out of luck, but the company still needs to make every new generation more powerful. And there are three ways to do it. One, scale down the size of each transistor, go from five nanometers to three. This way they will be able to pack more of them on the same die. The more transistors the processor has, the more powerful it is. If that's not available, it can always increase the size of a chip itself and fit more transistors that way. But the larger chip leads to more heat and higher energy consumption. That's one of the reasons why Pro MacBooks still have fans. Technically, they could be fanless, but Pro and Max chips are just too big and produce too much heat to be cold passively. But there's also a third option, increasing the clock speeds, AKA the amount of current that flows through the transistors. This way, the chip can perform more operations at any given time, but this also means more heat and higher energy consumption. At least this way, Apple doesn't have to do any changes to the architecture or chip design. So for the M2, Apple decided to do all these things at once. The M2 was still five nanometer chip, but it got a slightly improved architecture. The die itself got larger and the clock speeds were also increased. Under the hood, this was pretty much the same M1, but now it had 25% more transistors, higher performance, both single core and multi-core, and improved energy efficiency, though it was noticeably hotter than the M1. I had one of those and it really was hotter than the M1. More powerful, but hotter. But no one really cared. You know why? Because it performed better while using the same amount of energy. It wasn't about the battery life, more about performance, Per what? Use less energy, give more power, this kind of deal. Now, you might ask how this approach can even be sustainable. If that new chip is hotter, uses more energy, and is only slightly faster, then what's the point of all that? Think about it. It might need more power on full throttle, but since it's more powerful, it's gonna finish the task faster. And since the architecture itself is more efficient, while it's not doing intensive things, it's gonna use less energy. Everything kind of balances out. This approach may be sustainable, but not for long. One thing, the chip will get too big, too hot, and too inefficient. Now in all this, with the M3, Apple did the same thing. Switched from five nanometers to three nanometers, made the chip bigger, and slightly increased the clock speeds. There were also 
also many improvements to the GPU system, but that doesn't matter right now. To you, it might seem that everything worked out in Apple's favor. The architecture got better, the performance got higher, everyone wins. But if we act as detectives and look at the spec sheets for the M3, we'll see that the switch to the new architecture didn't really do much. On paper, the transistor should have gotten at least 40% smaller than before. The math says that without changing the chip size, the number of transistors should have increased by roughly 70%. I saw some people saying that by their calculations, the transistor density should have been almost three times higher. I can't really vouch for that, but it doesn't matter. 70%, 280%, M3 has gotten bigger and we expected to get at least twice as many transistors and almost double the performance. What we really got was only 20% more transistors and even bigger die and higher clock speeds. And it became even hotter than it was before. I used it and in heavy tasks, the fans were ramping up and producing lots of noise. Not something you'd expect from a MacBook, right? And like you all saw from our videos, the performance difference was quite small, around 10 to 15%. Definitely not what we were expecting to get from the first three nanometer chip. But the problems keep stacking. TSMC can go lower than three nanometers and the three nanometer they do now is not as efficient as it must be. Apple can fit more transistors into their chips and they can't make the chips much larger. The M3 MacBooks are already hot and loud under heavy tasks and doing the same things the company did before will only make things worse. How to make the M4 more powerful? The only thing they can do is add in more cores. Look at the M4. It has two extra CPU cores over the M3, but only 10% more transistors. For the M4, Apple couldn't have gone for the two nanometer. Each shift to the new architecture gets progressively more expensive and complicated. Apple is out of options really. And the competitors, like I said, have already cut up. The Snapdragon XE Lite in the latest Surface laptops is almost as powerful and efficient as the M3. Windows has been optimized for ARM, and every month more and more apps get their ARM updates. Photoshop, Lightroom, Blender, DaVinci Resolve, all these apps already have native ports. There's also a special emulation layer built in that lets you run almost any x86 app with almost no loss in performance. And there's AI too. These Snapdragon X chips were created with AI in mind and on paper are two and a half times more powerful than the latest chip from Apple. Apps are already using AI modules now, so with each passing month, the Windows ARM computers will do the same tasks faster and faster. Apple started the revolution in 2020. They took a gamble and they won. But with each day, the lead Apple has gets smaller and smaller, and soon it will be gone completely. The M series chips will once again follow the industry trends and Apple will be lagging behind. Well, don't tell me you believe that. Apple lagging behind? A few months ago, when the M3 came out, I probably would have believed all that, but we just got the M4 iPad Pro. And even though everything I said about it is true, it actually is a much bigger deal than we expected. Yes, Apple did switch to a better three nanometer architecture, made the die larger, increased the frequencies, all for a slightly improved performance, the same 15% like before. But here is the kicker. The M3 should have never existed. Yep, you heard me right. The whole M3 generation was created for one purpose, be the first ones to make a three nanometer laptop chip. Apple wanted to be first so badly that they just went to TSMC and took the first thing available. And obviously it was the worst option. Apple didn't even do that much engineering for the M3. They just reused most of the components from the M2. That's why we saw such a minor jump in performance. M4, is what the M3 should have been from the start. The architecture of the M4 is much better in every way. More efficient layout, better performance, lower heat. It just wasn't ready in time. It's the same story like with the iPhone. The A17 Pro inside also uses the same first gen three nanometer tech and it also suffered from overheating issues. And just like the M4, the A18 will fix all the issues. If you have the M3 Mac right now, don't get sad. Even though the M4 is better, this doesn't make the M3 inherently bad. I have one of those and even though it's a filler generation like the iPad 3, it's still a perfectly fine MacBook. But there is another layer to this whole story. The three nanometer process used for the M3 at the time was so inefficient and unoptimized 
that it didn't work with any of the existing production lines. So TSMC had to create a new production line just for Apple. The line that was only needed for making chips based on this inefficient technology for only one generation of chips. And now when better tech is already available, Apple is getting rid of this line or they will as soon as the M4 MacBooks come out. The production lines for the M4 are compatible with next generation of chips, AKA M5 and M6. So for a few more years, we shouldn't see any filler generations. When the new iPad Air came out, everyone wondered why M2 and not M3. And now you know why, to close the useless manufacturing line. Even Vision Pro uses the M2 for this exact reason. It's all coming together. It's all just one big game done for one purpose, to score points for being the first. By the way, we have a great video about the new iPad Air, check it out. Sure, there is the M3 iMac and it kind of breaks my perfect theory, but I think it's a misfit. Another filler generation that's internally ready for the M4, but didn't have the chip at the time. Still don't believe me. Look at this. This is the M3 Max chip. Now look at this the M2 Max. Notice anything different? The M3 Max doesn't have this empty space at the bottom. That space in M2 Max is occupied by the special Ultra Fusion bus. Apple uses it to connect two Max chips together to form one Ultra chip. The M3 Max wasn't even planned to have this bus, which means the M3 Ultra will never happen. That's why the Mac Studio and Mac Pro are still being sold with the M2 Ultra. Their next upgrade will be the M4 Ultra. Now, now, you might ask, then why would Apple do all that graphics improvement with the M3? All that ray tracing stuff. My guess is that at that time, they already had a newer architecture available, but only for the graphics. So they used the M3 to smooth out the kinks, find out pressure points and all that. Because if they didn't have this better tech for graphics when making the M3, then why would they create all these dynamic hashing systems and add ray tracing? Why do all that on a filler chip and then completely ignore the graphics when showing us the M4. Seems sketchy. I'm not saying that this is 100% true, but since there were no loud statements about the graphics of the M4, I might be onto something here. All that I said so far doesn't really cover one thing, the AI side of things. I told you how powerful these X Elite chips are with AI stuff to two and a half times faster, and it's true, but only if the measurements are wrong. Let me explain. When measuring the neural performance, you use a data set of certain size and type, just like any standardized testing. For testing the M3, Apple used a data set that turned out to be twice as big as the one the other chip manufacturers use. So the numbers for the M3, M2, and M1 should be just multiplied by two. And when we do that, it turns out that the difference isn't that huge. Sure, the Axolite on paper is still 15% more powerful than the M4, but eventually it will come down to optimization. That's where Apple is king. The developers really do try their best to optimize everything for Macs. As for Windows, we all know that no matter how powerful the computer is, some apps will just work poorly. That's just the realities of Windows computers. And as an icing in the cake, the M4 should have come out in 2023. So technically, it's a previous gen chip. X Elite is the shiny new thing. We saw the WWDC and how much emphasis Apple puts into running AI models on device. Obviously, both the new iPhone with A18 this September and the new Max with M4 Pro and Max, they will have much better neural modules. That's the company's real focus, not the die size or nanometers. AI is what Apple will make its biggest feature. With the new Mac OS, all Apple Silicon Macs will get tons of code features, rewriting text, proofreading it, summarizing the articles in Safari, generating images and emojis, live transcription of voice memos. Even Siri will get smarter and use Apple's own LLM running on device with the ability to interact with ChatGPT. These are just the beginning, I'm telling you. After the neural modules get even better, we'll see some insane features come into the Macs. Apple hasn't lost. It might have suffered a small blow, but it's not the first time this happened. What should you do if you want to buy a Mac? I'd say relax and enjoy the show. Apple and Snapdragon now are going to fight each other, make better and better chips each time. It's not about dethroning Apple. You can't always be the leader. It's all about good old competition. Competition is the best source of inspiration. So Apple would have to think out of the box to innovate, to come up with something new. But if you really need a Mac right now, we have two great videos explaining all Mac chips in memory.